There was a mighty nation, blessed above all of creation. It was a rare and precious pearl. Conceived in faith and liberty, home of the brave, land of the free, it was the envy of the world. But this shining city on a hill has turned from the Creator's will and let evil take control. Now the reckless men who lead them want to strip away their freedom and to steal their very soul. Now it's smoke and mirrors, switching bait, criticize and confiscate and let the guilty walk away. In this once righteous, godly nation, in the halls of education, they forbid a child to pray. They say we need to spread the wealth. They pretend to guard the health of the feeble and the poor. While the hand they hold behind their backs confuses and conceals the fact that the wolf is at the door. There's an unseen hand that pulls the string. It makes his little puppets dance to every song he sings. As the night rolls in on a rising tide, look beyond the shadows. Behold a pale horse ride. They claim to seek a new world order, nations without borders, but don't believe the lie. Even in this wealthy nation, it could come down to starvation in the twinkling of an eye. They tell us there will soon be peace. Our lives will be an endless feast. But they lead us toward the dark. In the distance, sabers rattle, and the armies train for battle as the beast prepares his mark. Welcome, Brother Republic. 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 Truth Radio Broadcast, Republic Broadcasting Network. I'm your host, Tom Lackabara Stewart. And finally, finally, we have Lori Anderson back. We'll be having a guest that is going to be speaking on Right to Travel. Uh, and uh, we're going to be getting back in a little bit of the meat and potatoes of what we really usually do. I know that the election has uh, gotten everybody fired up, and we're still going to be covering some uh, national, or if you can call it that, union issues of uh, this corporation, however we want to call it, man. It's such a psychological operation that people think it's a country. But anyway, uh, we're going to be covering some of that. Uh, the first clip I want to share with you tonight uh, is uh, a... a uh, CNN uh, slam on a Trump uh, chief of staff pick. Uh, this is a critique both on CNN as well as the Breitbart reporter that is defending uh, Bannon as Trump's pick. Now, I want to be fair and balanced, so I have a little bit of an issue with them both. However, uh, more with CNN, of course. So if you can, roll clip one. Very much. I want to bring in now Kurt Bardella, is a former spokesman for Breitbart, and even and Evan, excuse me, uh, McMullen, the independent presidential candidate. Sorry about that, Evan. Uh, but, right. but before we get to them, I want to start with Joel Pollack. Uh, Joel is a senior editor at large and in-house counsel for Breitbart News. Uh, thank you, Joel. Thank you to the entire panel. But Joel, I'm going to start with you. Who is a real Steve Bannon? Is he an anti-Semite, a white nationalist, uh, a misogynist? As many believe. As many believe. Actually. As many don't believe, it's actually how as many propagandize because now the attack is on. You have an Orthodox Jew sitting here defending this man, but that's not good enough. Not even for Don Lemon. These people are just unscrupulous and they will continue with their attacks no matter what. Now, I'm one of those conservatives that's not all about defending the nation of Israel with every single step because personally, I believe in America first and no other country first. But that's just me. I don't know. That's just me. However, it doesn't mean I'm anti-Semitic. I grew up in a household. Half of us were married into Jews and everything. I don't have a problem with that. But look, uh, when it comes down to it, uh, the United States needs to come first. We need to come first. 
and not for anything, but uh, you can take these Chuck Schumers and send them back to Israel with their dual citizenship and try and tell them to, to open up the flood floodgates of, of immigration uh, and, and, and not require IDs for voting and all of that stuff and see how well it goes over there. So I'm just saying, uh, when it comes to Breitbart, however, they are uh, a lot more pro-Israel than, than I would ever be. Uh, so to make an accusation that Breitbart part or any of its uh, its its major staff members are anti-semitic it's a joke it is just an absolute flat out joke and only cnn and their or ciann would push that uh, operation mockingbird narrative well the first thing to acknowledge is that steve bannon is a national hero because of steve bannon and kellyanne they saved donald trump's campaign and they helped him win the white house and as a result of that we're going to see Supreme Court appointments of individuals who will uphold the Constitution. And for that, America owes Steve Bannon a great debt of gratitude. Yes, America owes him a debt of gratitude. And all of the liberal, progressive, regressive communists are, of course, going to come apart at the absolute seams and want to attack him just for that reason. But no, he's not an anti-Semite. He is a person who treats all people equally. You can see I'm an Orthodox Jew, I'm very observant. Uh, I keep the Sabbath, I keep all the Jewish holidays, I keep kosher. Steve and I have worked together in close quarters for four and a half years, and he's always been very sensitive to Jewish concern. And I have to fact check Tom Foreman there. You know, if you're going to report something, you have to get the facts right. Breitbart News has nothing to do with birtherism, absolutely nothing. And I can tell you that firsthand because I'm the person who reported on some of that phenomenon. That's what actually leads me to my little problem with our... A little friend here with the funny hat uh, just saying uh, the reason that I have a problem with him is that he reported on that phenomena like it was a phenomena well anyone who knows anything about Sabarka and the Sabud cult knows that there is far more to Obama than meets the eye there is far more meaning that he was most likely a Manchurian candidate. He was backed by the Rockefellers. He was created, in fact. Frank Marshall Davis, the whole nine yards. He was literally a Marxist communist that was set up. He was raised in, in, uh, in, in inside of Islam in a school that was uh, pretty much a progressive Islamic school, if you could have both those things and have any sensibility to it. But anyway, just saying, you know, how the regressives make no sense anyway. So here I want to illustrate to you, because everybody who listens to RBN and our network knows that while we are conservative and while we are mostly Republican and stand for the Republic form of government, we also point the finger very closely at these things, uh, such as the Sabarka cult, and, and that gave rise to like uh, the whole situation behind uh, Lorena Fuddy, who mysteriously died in a plane crash, uh, and that was the uh, person that was in charge of vital statistics in Hawaii, who was a member of the same cult in Indonesia that Obama's mother was a part of. So while this guy has reported deeply on birtherism, it makes you wonder exactly, uh, you know, are we dealing with controlled opposition with Breitbart? I don't know. However, uh, Bannon has been pretty much a straightforward individual. Uh, is he surrounded by wolves, or is he really truly a voice of truth? Uh, that is That remains to be seen. Uh, but for all of the policies that Trump stands for right now, well, no, I'm not going to say all of. Stop and frisk is really kind of absolutely disturbing. But anyway, for most of the policies that Trump stands for, uh, I pretty much go along with. Um, but we are going to be keeping a very close eye on these things because, as we know, uh, always their feet needs to be held to the fire of truth. In a heavily resourced and documented article at AmericanThinker.com titled Barack Hussein Sobarka by Jason Kissner, we find some amazing discoveries regarding the identity problem of Barack Hussein Obama. Jason Just Kissner so we can is remember. an associate professor of criminology at California State University, Fresno. Not exactly some fly-by-night uh, unknown person there, right? Following is an edited synopsis of that article with an absolutely surprising find by the P.P. Simmons staff at the end of this video.
One of the unexplained mysteries in the all but missing documentation of the early life of Barack Obama is the appearance of the name Sobarka as his last name on an official document filled out by his mother. We are in possession of Stanley Ann Dunham Sotoro's 1968 application to extend her 1965 passport for an additional two years. Explain to me one liberal who has responded to that, or neoconservative for that matter. Her passport, by the way, is now reportedly destroyed. On the second page of the application, Ann Dunham attempted to exclude her son Barack Obama, or Sobarka, from her passport. But the item has been crossed out, perhaps on the advice of the consulate in Jakarta, as this would have left seven-year-old little Barry passportless so the exclusion did not happen. I really am rather sick at all of these people that would try and say that all of us are just crazy about all this stuff and it's just all figments of our imagination when there's so much evidence to prove that there's so much absolute nonsense here that there's something to be concerned about. You know, it's only the presidency of the United States for Pete's sake and the one that issued his birth certificate happens to go down in a plane crash not long after. Gee, wonder how that happens. And she's the only one that died. Oh, gosh. You people, I hope you're not believing that kind of stuff. But anyway, here's the thing, man. You've got to stand by people who tell the truth, regardless of whether they tell the truth and, and they're a part of organizations that, you know, that are somewhat controlled, you know, Breitbart, ah, I don't know. I know that this fellow that, that Trump picked, he's not what they're saying that he is, so that's enough for me for a reason to stand up and at least protect him for the truth. ...thousand members worldwide. Fuddy's cult member name was Deliana. Her official position was regional helper. Note also that the World Sabud organization seems to have been based in, of all cities, Chicago. Wow, think about it. Indonesia, Chicago, Hawaii, three locales linked directly and very importantly to Obama's life. We also know from a Hawaii Advertiser article that Sabud was introduced to Hawaii in the 1960s. Obama's mother was directly linked to Sabud by her biographer and New York Times reporter Janie Scott in the book A Singular Woman, The Untold Story of Barack Obama's Mother. This book was reviewed by the New York Times, so this is a heavily documented fact. Loretta Fuddy worked her way up the ranks and became chairwoman of Sabud USA based in Seattle from 2006 to 2008. But note that of all the persons that could have been installed as director of the State Department of Health in Hawaii, Hawaii chose Fuddy, a leader of a small cult with roots in Indonesia and connections to Barack Obama's mother. Secondly, remember that Fuddy assumed the directorship position in Hawaii in January 2011 after being appointed by Hawaii's governor just a few months before the release of Obama's long-form birth certificate. Changing one's name for spiritual reasons was something frequently done by followers of the cult Sabud. And Stanley Ann Satoro was, in fact, closely associated with Sabud. We know that. It is reasonable, then, to suppose that Sobarka the name chosen for Obama on that passport arose in the same way new names for others, like Deliana Loretta Fuddy did. But remember that the name Sobarka appears in the passport renewal section labeled Amend to Include or Exclude Children. The name Barack Hussein Obama Sobarku is crossed out. This signifies that Obama's mother had apparently decided to exclude Barack from her passport renewal. Apparently, Stanley Ann Dunham Satoro changed her mind about the exclusion. Perhaps this was done after having been informed by the consulate there that doing so would leave Barack without a passport. But there is another possibility, one just as valid and even simpler. What if Obama's mother was trying to include Obama in the renewal, but she wasn't able to produce a birth certificate? And the Sabud name, Subarka, simply did not suffice legally. That could explain why the name Subarka appears nowhere else in any of Obama's documentation of which we are currently aware. But now for the real shocker in this entire matter. The staff at P.P. Simmons did some research and found an old picture of the founder of the cult of Sabud, one Mohammed Sabu 
Sumo Hadi we Jojo. Do you see anything odd here? I'm looking at the picture right now, and they are dead Think about fingers, it. So I'll Buddy, be posting this. Obama's mother, Dunham, Cebu, Hawaii, Chicago, Indonesia, no birth certificate, Subarka on the passport, a dead Hawaii Department of Health director, the one who conveniently certified Obama's forged and fabricated long-form birth certificate, are all of these simply odd coincidences? And you have to we'll, make sure that you tell your we'll viewers discuss, the truth about this. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that with Kurt as well, who is a spokesman, in just a moment here. But you said he's not an anti-Semite. Is he a white nationalist? My question, a white nationalist, a misogynist, or even bigoted in any way that you know of? Not at all. Steve Bannon does not have a bone of prejudice in his body. And in fact, Steve Bannon went out of his way at Breitbart to look for talent among non-traditional conservatives, just like Andrew Breitbart had championed the cause of black conservatives, Latino conservatives, women conservatives. Steve Bannon did the same thing, and he brought people on board. You know, I see Kurt there on television. He's an Asian-American conservative. Here we are, an Asian-American conservative, an Orthodox Jewish conservative, both of whom work for Steve Bannon. And the question is whether he's a white nationalist. I think not. Well, then why traffic in that if he's not? Is that, is that traffic in that? Traffic in that. Really? Even more insidious if he's not, but then he traffics in it? Do you hear the terminology here? Traffics insidious. Wait, the alt-right does have factions within it that, that add to it that are white nationalists. I share things within the alt-right, and I am not a white nationalist. In fact, I stand against the whole white, black, red, pink, per purple polka dot, all of that Marxist nonsense. I look at us all as being Americans. However, there are many in the alt-right who are stark constitutionalists. There are some that are white nationalists. That is true. There are some that are flamboyant homosexuals, like Milo. You see, the problem here is with these, these types that try and divide us because someone else takes interest in a cause or takes interest in a portion of what we take interest in. So they try and smear the entire thing by using terms like traffics and insidious. This is a typical divide and conquer tactic. But if you use that same, uh, that same idea with the left with you know the 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 black panthers who stood outside of of voting places with sticks during the mccain uh election the the M mccain standing against obama that 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 election of course uh that doesn't fit the narrative so that doesn't count uh and things like that so you're getting you're getting the point the same with the oink oink bang bang they're leftists but of course this progressive won't he won't wear that. No more will we in the alt-right. I will stand with alt-right. And I will tell you, I don't take part in any of that KKK or white supremacist nonsense. There is no one that's supreme above the other except Jesus Christ, maybe. That's what the real truth is here. The smearing of Christianity. They love doing that. But, hey, that's not the subject tonight, right? Can you name for me, Don, one white nationalist article at Breitbart? Just one. Well, I saw he, that whole build-up segment. I didn't see a single white nationalist article. Not one. There's, yeah, there's, yeah, there's, yeah. There's an article defending the alt-right, and also the alt-right praises Breitbart. Yeah, and uh, I think the Black Panthers also praised uh, Barack Obama and the Democrat Party, too. So, Your um, point. You know, I, why traffic in that if, if, if he doesn't support it? Will you please stop it with the trafficking crap? God! It's important to draw a distinction between covering something and defending something. We published an article several months ago explaining the alt-right, talking about which parts of it were more offensive, which parts of it were less so. And that's not defending the alt-right, that's explaining it. In fact, the title, I believe, was something like explaining the alt-right to mainstream conservatives. That's journalism. That's not defense or advocacy. So I think it's very important to understand the distinction between those two, and that's a distinction we made very clearly at Breitbart yeah. and still make today. I, I said traffic, and I didn't say defend it. Exactly why this pissant decided to use a word like trafficking rather than supporting, just so that he could throw that in there. I mean, this guy is an absolute hack. 
a hack. You hear me? A hack. God, Don Lemon, you're a joke. But anyway, so I, I want to bring in the other part, the other members of the panel now, so that they can get in on this. Kurt, you worked with Breitbart. You know Steve Bannon. Um, you know, this is a man who said the website is a platform for the alt right. We've seen the headlines. Can you separate the man from the website? A similar question that uh, that I asked Joel before. Can you separate the man? Does he hold these views? And one more thing about the alt-right. It is a hashtag and a way of spreading information within the conservative community, as, and it means alternative right. That is, as opposed to maybe neoconservative or war hawkish right or a lot of other right. It's kind of libertarian-ish, uh, paleoconservative-ish. And yes, some of the nationalists have jumped aboard the train and they share their information but to be honest with you, really all it is is a hashtag of alternative right as non-elitists, as we have had enough of the establishment GOP. But that doesn't mean we're not conservatives. Hence, alternative right. It, it actually encompasses several different groups and kind of merges all of our information together. So what he's doing here is patently, absolutely, and uncategorically dishonest. He knows what he's doing. He's trying to smear all of this alternative right with just a select few, and it's not working. We're not going to let that happen because he is a absolute unscrupulous lying piece of garbage. Well, whether he holds these views or not, I don't think there is a separation between Steve Bannon and Breitbart. I think at this point, they're one of the same. And I've said this before, they're now going to go from being the propaganda arm of the Donald Trump campaign to now being the propaganda arm of the federal government. You know, for the first time, you're going to have a White House co-chief of staff, essentially, being able to run a media enterprise right out of the West Wing. What a little leftist oh, turncoat who infiltrated oh, the right, infiltrated Breitbart, just so that he could turn around and jam. Hold on a second. Did you notice what he just said for the first time about the White House running uh, uh, media? Look, look, we know that the White House has been feeding, has been feeding stories to the mainstream media. We have proof of this. Council on Foreign Relations members within the White House and within government have been feeding stories. I, I mean, they just legalized lying. Well, public. what's even worse to that? Tom, if you remember, remember the uh, sequester? Yes. Well, we the people get to pay for this crap because they gave $650 million um, uh, at that time. I think it was 2012. It was during the time of the shutdowns. Um, they gave two, $650 million for media. So, and, and this, We're is, paying this is what it. their narrative is. For the first time, a White House chief of staff is going to be running a press arm out of the White House. Are you kidding me? Really? Well, you know, and this this kills me. This when I heard this clip that you're that you were playing, it it really killed me because they white nationalist like ooh oh, that's yeah. a big boogeyman. <laughs> so let's 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 help with that boogeyman. Okay, a nationalist. This is what a nationalist is, an advocate or a believer in nationalism, a member of a political party or a group advocating national independence or a strong national government, meaning your state governments, by the way, guys. Yep. Um, another definition, nationalism, because we've got to cover all these bases. So these CNN people, maybe they'll listen to us and maybe they'll learn some definitions. Um, a feeling that people have of being loyal and proud of their country, often with the belief that it is better and more important than other countries. Now, that's not necessarily completely accurate, but I'm going off Merriam-Webster um, online. Then it says, a desire by a large group of people, such as people who share the same culture, history, and language. Oh, let's see, Americans. Yes, that's, that's a fact. Yeah, yeah. To form a separate and independent nation of their own. America's a union of nations. Hello. So why is that big, bad boogeyman? Ooh, my God, I'm so scared the white nationalist because he has white skin. There are black nationalists. There are nationalists everywhere because we understand that what Don Lemon 
uh, this individual is terrified of is he's terrified his little globalism poof is going to go away and actually people are waking up to the fact that the states are actually stronger than the than the federal government that the federal government can't run without the states supporting it in the first place and they're terrified over that and it just drives me nuts to hear this crock of crud and another um, definition out of the free dictionary.com, everybody, you can look it up yourself, is devotion, especially excessive or undiscriminating devotion to the interest or culture of a particular nation state. Yep. And, and I guess I, I guess since you and I are both white, that would technically, by Don Lemon's definition, make us white nationalists. <laughs> well, you know, then he would have to be judging by the color of my skin because actually I have a lot of Native American in me as well. So yep. is 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 he judging me by the color of my skin instead of the content of my character? I would say I yeah. think that that would make him a hater, wouldn't it? Under the it Marxist would. philosophy. <laughs> it would because what if what if on my birth certificate or my Which, certificate, by the way, by birth, the way that you have. <laughs> right. Um what what if it doesn't say white? What if it doesn't say Caucasian? I'm not telling anybody what it says. It's it's really not their business. But the thing is, I'm talking and referring to Don Lemon. What if it says something else? Well, heck, according to that one lady that was in, um, what was that? She was in, it was either ACLU or NAACP. I can't remember, Tom. It was a long while back. She was a white woman, and she said she was black. So, oh, uh, yeah, Dolenzal, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so, I mean, so how can you claim he's a white nationalist? Have you asked him if he's white? Well, hey, actually, under the liberal philosophy, you can self-identify as anything you want these days. I mean, there's like 57 genders, like Heinz 57 flavors, you know? Uh, I you guess, know, uh, oh, oh you know, who was it uh, that identified themselves as an attack helicopter? I like that one. <laughs> oh my gosh i don't know i don't know but you know you see what i'm saying so he hasn't even asked this man are you white he's a, well you're a white nationalist mm -hmm. yeah, i know i know we you have know, a caller we have a caller on the line that might want to chime in on this uh guy Thar in oklahoma hi hello you're on oklahoma guy Thar. All right. Uh, okay. Well, that's all well. Right. I want to we'll bring something going. else up, Tom, as well. Okay, because and a lot of people are smashing KKK. What? There's six thousand members in the United States of America, but but I digress. Something to the complete and total opposite. Oh, okay. I actually, I actually got get into that a little bit later. By the way, you guys want to see this video? Well, go to this is on YouTube. Hold on a second. Go to RTR Truth Media on YouTube. You can listen to the rest of that. I'm not going to run that on, the rest of that on the show, but I get into that. Uh, I get into that. 6,000 in the okay. entire... So you mean okay. to tell me 6,000 KKK members in the entire United States, they, they, they really affected the election of Donald J. Trump. If that's the case, the left is dead. Completely well, dead. Well, here's my thing. Here's my thing on a totally different aspect. Yeah. Um, I think we're getting ready to go to break. Are we getting ready to go to, to commercial? We are. We okay. Are. I'll, I will finish that after a word from our uh, sponsors. Hang in with us, guys. It's going to be an interesting ride tonight. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Do you have difficulty taking supplements? Are you searching for a high-quality, complete nutritional drink that your whole family will love? Nutramedical's life support has arrived. All of your daily nutritional requirements in one quick, delicious drink. Dr. Bill Deagle's life support is a proprietary blend of vegan protein, activated vitamins, essential minerals, amino acids, probiotics, green tea, digestive enzymes, anti-inflammatories, cancer prevention, detoxification, and much more. Your body will high-five you for this one. Life support is the best complete nutritional meal replacement.
replacement on the market. Whether you are an elite athlete, have post-operative challenges, chronic illness, elderly, or a family that just wants a quick, delicious drink, try Dr. Bill Deagle's Life Support for optimized nutrition in one great-tasting smoothie. Just add cold water, almond milk, fruit, or anything else you like. Nutramedical's Life Support. Try our great-tasting chocolate or vanilla today. Call 888-212-8871 or visit us online at Nutramedical.com. Nutramedical.com for the whole family. Hi, my name is Chris. Since the 1970s, I have been actively making products available that support good health. What makes my juices flow is helping mankind get healthy. Today, I'm going to tell you about a product that will help your juices to flow. I am excited to recommend Dr. Miller's Holy Tea to you. Even if we are eating a clean diet, these impurities are entering our bodies. Holy Tea moves these poisons that are creating havoc with our health out of our bowels. It works on the whole digestive system. The five tasty herbs are combined to provide an amazing detoxifying and healing tea that will rid your body of the pollutants and soothe your digestive tract, and in some cases, help you lose weight. It is critical for our health to move all of the environmental toxins from our bodies. The holy tea can do that. As a hydrocolon therapist, remember, with every BM, you're supporting RBN. www.holytea.org 800-326-2001 Do you or someone you know suffer from chest pain, blood pressure, cholesterol, or irregular heartbeat? Are you looking for a more natural solution to overcome these health challenges? You hear the ads all the time. If this stuff's so good, why doesn't my doctor prescribe it? That's easy. Doctors are not trained in natural medicine. Extendivite Heart Tonic does want you to be as healthy as you can be. And it really works. Take Extendivite for six months and your doctor will say, I don't know what you're doing, but don't stop. It's working for you. Get the dependability of Extendivite. Just see how you feel in six months. A two-month supply of either capsules or liquid is only $69.95 plus shipping and handling. Call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822. Or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with You, your husband, your wife, your children, we all need food. And with dozens of food storage companies buying up airtime all over radio, it's hard for you to know which company you can actually trust. Hey folks, John Statmiller here. We at RBN understand, which is why I personally searched out a storable food company and one with similar core values to us here at RBN and of course you, the listener. Well, I found such a company. I'd like to introduce you to Numana Food Storage. Numana Food Storage, highly nutritious, GMO-free, contains no aspartame, no high fructose corn syrup, has no chemical preservatives or soy, and Numana Food Storage has a 25-year shelf life. To back up my claims, we've made Numana Food Storage the exclusive food sponsor of RBN. Call 888-597-0775, 888-597-0775. Order online at numanarepublic.com. That's N-U-M-A-N-N-A, republic.com. Food storage you'll love to eat. Network. I'm your host, Tom Lacavara Stewart. You're on with me and Lori Anderson. Anyway, Lori, you were saying. Right. And so what I wanted to address is, you know, as mainstream or lamestream, I'm not going to call them mainstream anymore because we've seen their numbers and it's it's amusing. Um, so lamestream media wants to make everybody panic over this white nationalist stuff. So here's the reality, though. Everybody who keeps repeating this junk They have the right to freely assemble with who they choose, period. No matter what color of your skin, no matter what color of your eyes, no matter what color your hair is. And to 
get all up in arms because there are 6,000 KKK members within the whole United States of America because we're sure that they're just going to oppress us. You know what? I get so tired of hearing that, and I'll tell you why I get so tired of hearing that. Because the individuals that are spewing that crap to the people are telling the people that we do not think you are overcomers. We do not think you are smart enough to get a job. We do not think that you are smart enough enough to to make good money we do not think you can do this without the white man getting off of (laughs) your neck now let me tell you something my skin color is white except for of course when i'm in a lot of sun and then i'm pretty daggone dark because i have native american in me cherokee to be exact but the reality of the fact is i'm a female i could call myself a quote-unquote minority do you think i do that heck no i do not you know why i am not under anybody nor am i over anybody i will not be anybody's victim i refuse when you allow yourself to be a victim then you give them the power no if something happens you use it as a stepping stone and not a stumbling block you get back up dust your knees off and move on and you show them no matter what you do to me no matter what it is i am going to prove you wrong by succeeding and when you do remember this success and happiness are truly what your enemies hate to see you being successful and happy. That is the best revenge is living well. Would you agree? I would agree. I really would. You know, yeah. uh, I do have, uh, we have to keep moving on now. Uh, I do have a, a second clip here uh, getting a little bit off topic of, of, of that insanity. I, I, I share information on the alt-right hashtag all the time. It's a way of aggregating uh, news that, that uh, alternative Republicans that don't want globalism and all of that share. I highly recommend all of you check out. That's hashtag A-L-T-R-I-G-H-T. Mm-hmm. Anyway, our second clip is is a little bit concerning to me. I have, I have a number of concerns coming up with Trump, which is things that we need to cover. I mean, we have to be objective. Oh, yeah. uh, clip two would be Cruz meeting with Trump. <laughs> and I really enjoyed watching this dude backpedal now that he knows that this fellow's got the uh, Oval Office. Can you roll that clip, Mike? Joining us now, a guy that we do not see enough, and he's back in the fray and was just in New York City. We're a little angry. You were around the block, Senator Ted Cruz. <laughs> welcome back to Fox and Friends. Good morning. Well, good morning. Good to be back. How would you characterize your visit with the president-elect? Uh, listen, it, it was very productive. I spent several hours uh, in Trump Tower, had, had the chance to meet with the president-elect, with the vice president-elect, with, with senior members of the transition team. And, and I think we had very good and productive conversations uh, about how we can work together to, to really deliver on the promises made to the American people. Uh, this election was a powerful mandate for change. I think the American people overwhelmingly said, we want to change the path we're on, and, and I am eager and committed to working with President-elect Trump, to working with the new administration, to get it done, to sure. actually delivering on what we told the voters we would do. So, Senator, when you say work with uh, President-elect Trump, are you talking about in the capacity as a U.S. senator or in the capacity of somebody on his cabinet or an executive-level job in the administration? Well, listen, I, I have an incredible job right now representing 27 million Texans, and I'm incredibly honored to hold that job, and it's a job I take very, very seriously. Um, I'm eager to work with the new president in whatever capacity uh, I can have the greatest impact defending Power. the principles that, that I was elected mm-hmm. to defend, mm-hmm. defending Neo- the, the principles Trotskyism. of freedom, defending the Constitution. And, and, and we spent a great deal of time talking about how when the voters give Republicans control of the White House, control of every executive branch, control of the Senate, and control of the House, we got to deliver. I, I mean, it is time right. to put you up think? or shut up. And, and, yep. and I think there are incredible opportunities. I'm looking forward to working very, very closely 
with President Trump to deliver on his promise to repeal Obamacare. I'm looking to working very, very closely with President Trump to confirming strong Supreme Court justices and protecting the constitutional rights of Americans. Yeah. And, and I think that's what the voters are looking for. Senator, you were behind closed doors yesterday at Trump Tower. There's been a lot of criticism from media saying that the campaign or the administration is uh, in total chaos. They don't know what they're doing. They have not appointed yet a cabinet <laughs> position. What was your sense being behind closed doors there with President-elect Trump? Is oh, it look, in total I disarray? No, of course not. I, I thought that was complete silliness. Now, now, nobody should be surprised that there are media critics who are trying to throw rocks at the president-elect and at the transition team, that right. they don't want like the he president was. to succeed. Uh, what I saw from the president-elect on down to every person at the transition was, was men and women working hard with an enormous task in front of them, a task of bringing together a new administration, uh, of, okay, of I, I can't take any more. I can't take any more. It's you know, killing I agree. me. Yeah. Oh my God, the neoconservative Trotskyite pretending to be constitutionalist Ted Cruz. It drives he drives me nuts. This is the same person that called the Council on Foreign Relations uh -huh. a den of vipers while his wife was a member. This is and wanted he Obama to hurry up anything. with the Trans-Pacific Partnership as well. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. He will he say to hurry anything. Up with that. And you know what makes me upset? is when he talks 95% of the time. I really like what he's saying. The problem is, is that he's absolutely full of bull cakes. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. You know, um, just, <laughs> you know, and that goes back to that nationalism. It really yeah. does. Because yeah. nationalism, the belief that nations, pay attention people, here's another definition for it will benefit from acting independently rather than collectively emphasizing national rather than international goals. Oops. So if yep. you really pay attention to what they're doing, you understand that they are really scared and terrified. You can see this all across. Um, you know, Tom, I think it is absolutely hilarious what we were uh, discussing earlier. You know, there is, um, to go off of that, Pence, and there was a report, um, I'm trying to pull it up right this second, but Pence tells the House GOP to get ready to pass sweeping legislation, okay? <laughs> and this is reported in Bloomberg Politics. Now, the reason yep. I'm bringing this up, um, apparently, Vice President-elect Mike Pence told the House Republicans in a closed-door meeting on Thursday to be ready to move a lot of legislation next year. It says, quote, we're going to move an agenda unquote, focused on rebuilding the military and improving the economy, Pence told reporters after the meeting. Now, why is this so funny? Tom, you already are aware of this, so we're going to explain to the audience why this is so hilarious. Um, many people probably have never heard of H.R. 1669. If you haven't, you're getting ready to hear about it. It's the Judgment Fund Transparency Act of 2015, and the sponsor's Representative Stuart Chris. He's a Republican out of Utah, and it was introduced in um, March 26th of 2015. So this is not something that was just introduced because Trump came on the scene, so get out of that notion. Okay, so what it is, is this bill, it's, um, it's called that because it says, be it enacted for the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, act may be cited as the Judgment Fund Transparency Act of 2015. And it is because what they were doing is they were failing to disclose who funds were going to, where they were going, and the American people were not aware of this. This stems back to, of course, which thing? It stems back to the Democrats starting to really panic. And the reason they're panicking, of course, is because of the nice little bit of money that got shuffled for ransom. And, of course, that was not uh, let known to the people. And everybody, of course, found out about that. And they were nice chunk of people. which went to Iran, by the way. Right, and so so what happened is, um, is that I I've gotten a couple of clips for yeah we'll we'll get to them we'll get to them we have a we have our guest that's holding off air there I want to I don't I want to get to that a little bit later on in the show but uh, yeah that's what we're going to be we're going to be touching on that 
And yeah. that's very important because one of the, the things that, that, you know, I have to say, I, I understand the whole concept of, of, of most Americans wanting to rebuild our military and all that. Folks, the problem with this is, and, and, and this is one of the concerning things about Pence being involved, and uh, because I, I believe him to be a neoconservative, and this is an, a, a little bit of the problem with, you know, I, I'm, I have no problem helping our vets. The problem that I have is policing the world. That is not the 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 foundation that our our republics were, were founded upon. Uh, it was trade with all, ally with none. Um, you know, a, a small uh, uh, military, only enough to, to take care of our borders. But you know, to rebuild our military, if if they were talking about only national defense, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have a problem with that. But what they're talking about far exceeds. This is, again, this is funding the American military-industrial complex. If you notice that both left and right have been consistently doing all the time. Obama, he, he tore it down in one aspect, built it up in other aspects. He took it more fascist. He was, he was pouring money into the private sector and defense contracts and, and spying and all of that. Uh, so all that money's been spent. Now you have a Republican comes back in, and I, I, what I kind of fear is that Pence will, will be a part of building up the overt uh, military again. It, look, we have got to understand the founding tenets that our republics were formed under. This is not one of them. This is, that's how you install totalitarianism. Look back to you know, the Illuminati's goals. I mean, you have the financial sector in Great Britain. You have the spiritual sector in Vatican. You have the military uh, section here. And, and they all come together. And a lot of these things that I see happening, like Russia, the Russian president, I'm really happy that we're not about to go to war with Russia. Amen. Thank God that Clinton didn't get in, because Amen. that probably would have happened, okay, yeah, as have. well as with uh, uh, Iran, okay. I was kind of really hoping that Trump was, you know, like he said, he, did, he, he opposed going into Iraq. He, he opposes all of these wars. But then you hear the drumbeats start beating already from Pence about rebuilding the military, and I you don't know, know, I'm just a little nervous. I have, I have an opinion on that, okay, because ahead, I've listened to a lot of, I've listened to a lot of what's been said about, quote-unquote, rebuilding the military, but he's also, at the same time, said about, we're not policemen of the world and pulling them out of places, so I think what he's referring to is because our manpower in the military is the lowest it's been in a very, 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 very long time as far as body count. Okay, so yeah, they poured it into the police. At, at, uh, police they basically yeah, militarized the police. police, right? So that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to. And and I'm just going to give benefit of the doubt until he shows different. But what the way that I am seeing it, okay, is that he's wanting to rebuild our manpower. He's not wanting to be the policeman of the world. He's wanting to bring them back. The way they're supposed to be. He's wanting to have... Well, if he took it from the, the police... And you don't need... Here's the thing. Okay? If you really want to rebuild the military, you don't have to add more money into it. You have to take that wasteful spending and redirect that wasteful spending instead of $900 for a toilet that you can get $189 for. Or... or <laughs> Seriously. And... Instead of a bolt that normally, if you go to Home Depot, costs two, three dollars, instead of paying twenty five dollars for it, you see what I'm saying? If they were sure. to redirect the spending, they wouldn't even have to do new spending. Um, and the thing is, is I understand about we do need to rebuild our our military as far as the body count. We do a lot. Yeah, of but we need to call the military the military, and we need to call the police the police. And what right. we've done is militarized the police. Right. Oh, yeah. And given you them weapons that. of war yep. to be used against yep. the American public, yep. not against foreign invaders or anything against the American public. I mean, there was there was a, a an MRAP that pulled a kid over. Mm -hmm. They thought that he was getting. I, you know, I hate to get graphic. He thought his girlfriend was going down on him in the car, and that's kind of against law in California. Dude gets pulled over in an MRAP. Yeah, I mean, and so on. here's the That's question: insane. Hillary Clinton, all of them, right? Oh, I know, I know, I know. What, I know. What's their famous saying? Weapons of war do not need to be on our streets. What do they think MRAPs are? Right. Mine, mine resistant, ambush protected. 
um, hello, they are better vehicles that they have for our police, the MRAPs, than a lot of our military that are in hot zones in places around the globe. Now, that's the truth. Um, oh, well, you know, they could do what Obama did and give them the ISIS. Well, yeah, he gave them Ow. plenty. Ooh. Gave them plenty. <laughs> gave them plenty. You know, I, I do have a question, Tom. I know I hate to keep reverting to this, but, but I wonder if Don Lemon, has he ever put a picture of Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump together and realized that she's not a black lady? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm just saying, because they keep saying people are racist because they didn't vote for her. Um, they're the same color. Yeah, I know. I'm, I, just, I know. I'm just wondering. Sorry, I had to revert back uh, to I that know, guy. I know, I know. All right, um, now, okay, hold on. we got to get back on sure. topic here. Okay, now, uh, in an article I, I saw that the, uh, I, I don't know, I think it was the New York Times or one of those rags, that basically criticized Trump uh, because he didn't let his White House correspondence uh, personnel know that he was going to have a steak dinner in New York City. That they right? all, and, and their comment was, their comment was, was that he was the most non-transparent administration in history. He hasn't even oh, taken the Oval yeah. Office yet, oh. and it's a steak dinner, and that is what they're hitting him with. So I you suppose know. that he doesn't have the right to travel any more than we have the right to travel, which leads us into our next topic, which we have somebody on the line you've been talking to. Yes. Uh, quite a bit. You want to introduce our, our, our upcoming guest and talk about her issue for a minute? Sure, absolutely. Um, everybody, this is Rebecca Barrington. She is out of Nevada, and um, she has some interesting things to let you know about uh, on a case about right to travel. Uh, welcome, Rebecca, to the show. Hello, Rebecca, are you on? Okay, while we're trying to Uh-oh. while we're trying we to see Rebecca what's going already. on, while we're trying to see what's going on, um, could be a glitch or something like that. We'll um, we'll cover that media uh, hype that you were. I laughed so hard, Tom, because you know Trump has been reading those WikiLeaks, and let me tell you why they're throwing a fit, people. It's not because their responsibility to be there in case something happens for safety. No. He knows <laughs> the insiders that are the liars that worked in order to intentionally sabotage his campaign. So, therefore, he knows that they are corrupt. Trump knows this. He is not um, an ignorant person by any means. So, what he showed them by doing that is, hey, you're no longer on the inside, and they threw a... Fit. And it was hilarious, absolutely hilarious in my opinion. He just set them on notice. You're no longer on the inside. You will know what I want you to know, and you are not going to sabotage what is going on. And that's like my steak message. dinner. <laughs> you know, that's right. You're, You're not going to sabotage my steak dinner, you know. Um, you're not going to make up things. Oh, my gosh, he chewed five times more than he should have on that piece of steak. You know, um, just crazy stuff. But that really, to me, um, and that's my personal opinion. Of course, um, Mr. Trump hasn't told me that or or anybody from that hasn't been on the news or anything like that. So, um, needless to say, that's just my opinion. But I thought it was hilarious because... It's really stressing them out that what they used to joke about, um, what they used to call us, you know, they're realizing they're no longer on the inside. They're, they're not in the in crowd anymore. They are on the outs, and alternative <laughs> media is mainstream. It is. And they hate that. They can't stand that. And they're absolutely um, yeah, panicked about it. Saying saying that he's he's the most untransparent president in the nation's history because he didn't tell them that he was going to have a steak dinner is probably uh, it just overstepping, overstating a little bit. <laughs> you know, and and that shows you how much of a panic mode they're in when they would actually say something that absolute. Um, but yeah, pa panic is. I I think is is the proper 
panic uh, is, is definitely Thomas. is definitely. All right, so we're gonna it, we're gonna pass by the right to travel. We were gonna cover that uh, next. I, I if if we get our guests back, then we'll cover it in the end on the second hour. Um, let's let's keep moving on. You, oh, she okay. is here. Okay, All right, well, go ahead. Rebecca, I'm glad we finally got yes. you back. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. Good, good to hear that. Um, so, Rebecca, let's let's start with um, a breakdown of kind of the way that this this incident all began. From the stop with the NH, the Nevada yes. Highway Trooper. Right, right. With, this, with the highway trooper. Right, so I was coming home from a job interview, and in this part of northern Nevada, if you're in the rural areas, there is really no way to travel except on a highway. You're kind of obligated. There are very few, quote, country roads. So um, I noticed uh, a trooper gain on me slowly. He was obviously checking out my um, the sign or placard, if you will, that uh, indicates that it's something other than a license plate, although it's metal and rectangular, same, and mounted in the same way. So he's, he's eyeballing that clearly, and then he went ahead and just carried on. And there was a point where I had to turn to go to my community. There was a, a, he wanted to see, he hung off at the side of the road and wanted to see which direction I would turn. So uh, he was just waiting there for me, and once I made my right turn, here come the lights. Um, as soon as he pulled me over, I had a pre-printed card stating my rights um, and basically invoking my Fifth Amendment right, and I had it just sort of tucked in the, the top of the window. And even though I was intellectually prepared for such a stop, I wasn't emotionally prepared for it. So the reality of being stopped by you know, a man with a gun that starts to um, oh, intimidate and do all those wonderful things that they, they're trained to do. Um, it, it, you just, you know, you, your plans kind of go out the window. I, I held my own pretty well, um, but I did end up getting a citation for um, a fictitious registration and no insurance. I actually do have insurance, but I because I am on the front lines of this right to travel movement, I wasn't going to offer those documents to him. So from there, um, I had my court appearance on Wednesday. And um, the very first thing, I, I enter into the, uh, the courtroom and I, my case number is called and uh, the very first thing out of my mouth when I was asked if I understood my rights, I made sure he knew I was there by special appearance mm -hmm. <laughs> and that I had some questions to ask before I answered any others. And uh, that, that set the tone. He immediately just, uh, the judge immediately took offense to my stance and uh, made sure that I knew that he was the one to ask all the questions. I didn't have any rights whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And um, he cited uh, that the, <laughs> he cited that uh, the state of the, the the state of Nevada Supreme Court has ruled that what you have to say is not valid. And I'm not going to listen to it. You know, he actually he said that. Everybody, say. I heard it. I heard it. <laughs> he actually did say that. Go ahead, Rebecca. <laughs> I'm sorry for cutting you off. Oh, no worries. And um, so then he reiterated, do you understand your rights? So I said, no. Okay, no hold break. on one second. We have a break, and we'll be back with Rebecca right after this break. Stay with us to hear this interesting topic. Welcome to the face of the new democracy. Here in the land of the natural Uh, uh, 
It's time for you to have your own custom smartphone app for your business and pay way less than you can imagine. Introducing the I Can Get To Silent Salesman Mobile Marketing App, a global mobile marketing and communication tool for your business. Go to appsapart.com and learn how you could earn up to $36,351 or more per month just by inviting two people or less into a $14.95 per month program. Go to appsapart.com and be sure to watch the video at the top of the site and listen to the audio message from the CEO near the bottom. This is something you won't want to miss. Go to appsapart.com or call 646-860-9540. That's 646-860-9540. You're listening to the Republic Broadcasting Network because you can handle the truth. There was a mighty nation blessed above all of creation. It was a rare and precious pearl. Conceived in faith and liberty, home of the brave, land of the free, it was the envy of the world. But this shining city on a hill, we are of the, the Creator's will, and the that there is a control. clear distinction in this particular between an individual and a corporation, and that the latter has no right to refuse to submit its books and its papers for examination on the suit of the state. The individual may stand upon his constitutional rights as a citizen. He is entitled to carry on his private business in his own way. His power to contract is unlimited. He owes no duty to the state nor to his neighbors to divulge his business or to open his doors to investigation so far as it may tend to incriminate him. He owes no duty to the state. Such he receives nothing therefrom beyond the protection of his life liberty and property. His rights are such as the law of the land long antecedent to the organization of the state and can only be taken from him by due process of law and in accordance with the Constitution. Among his rights are the refusal to incriminate himself and the immunity of himself and his property from arrest or seizure except under warrant of the law. That is warrant of the law. He owes nothing to the public so long as he does not trespass upon their rights. Upon the other hand, the corporation is a creature of the state. It is presumed to be incorporated for the benefit of the public. It receives certain special privileges and franchises and holds them subject to the laws of the state and the limitations of its charter. Its rights to act as a corporation are only preserved so long as it obeys the laws of its creation. There is a reserved right in the legislature to investigate its contracts and find out whether it has exceeded its powers. It would be a strange anomaly to hold that the state having chartered a corporation to make use of certain franchises could not exercise of its sovereignty inquire how those franchises had been employed and whether they had been abused and demanded the production of the corporate books and papers for that purpose. Hale v. Hinkle, United States Supreme Court. Go ahead, Lori. <laughs> I love you, Tom. <laughs> so anyway, Rebecca Barrington is back telling our her uh our she is telling us her story of, of what is happening in this area of Nevada and I'm gonna tell you folks, um, there is evidence. So uh the individuals that this evidence is gonna be collected upon don't think this is going to go away. Um, I hope they surely don't think so because uh, I'll let Rebecca explain it. Go ahead, Rebecca. You were in the court, and um, and you were uh, asking the judge uh, what when you – I think you well, started – first... you... go ahead. Yeah, the, the very first thing was I, I just started off, rather than even answering any questions, what my name was or anything, I just immediately – refused to relinquish any, uh, I refused to hand over any jurisdiction of my person or the subject matter to the court. Um, mm -hmm. I just wasn't going to be a sheep 
a, you know, presenting myself to the slaughter. And um, so, you know, the the, the tone started, I'm not going to bore you with all the initial details back and forth, but um, I just, I, I just asked that I, I'm not going to, you know, I, I need to, before I answer any questions, I need to ask some of my own. And he insisted he wasn't going to answer any of my questions, that only he had the right to ask any questions. But the Nevada Supreme Court gave him the rule and authority to make sure that I couldn't ask any questions. <laughs> and repeated, you know, so it went back and forth like this for a while. Do you understand your rights? And I would just repeatedly say no. And then I would mm-hmm. just kind of say to my little script, and I was prepared for... Um, you know, different um, responses that he might have for me. So I had, you know, I organized my papers, like, to topics so I could switch, you know, quickly um, pick up that that script for that particular response. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It served me pretty well. Um, So basically, he he would ask me again, do you understand your rights? And I said, you know, I have questions. And, And... I have a right, I asserted, under the Sixth Amendment to understand the nature and causes of the charges against me. He said, <laughs> "He said we're trying to get there, but do you understand your rights? And back and forth. No, sir, I have questions. Uh, back and forth, back and forth. And then finally... Didn't, he, didn't he tell you, you did, didn't he um, tell you that you didn't have a right to ask questions? Yes. So, again, he, he says, um, we get to a point where... Uh, he finally gets, you know, I'm wearing him down a little bit. He's starting to lose his cool. And he asks, so what? what is your question about your rights? I said, well, I need to know how you're going to try me in a civil or criminal action. Oh, it's criminal, you know. And then, he, and then I went on and just, you know, from my little pre-prepared script, I told him the Constitution gave him two criminal jurisdictions, either the uh, common law or admiralty law, uh, under Article, Article 6, Section 2 uh, of the Constitution, and Article mm-hmm. 1 of the 14th Amendment. Thank you, Lori, for that help. <laughs> <laughs> You're then, welcome. Anyway, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. <laughs> so, and then I said, okay, and I just I just go on. You know, he's ignoring me. I'm ignoring him. Um, mm-hmm. I said, I know that you've got the U.S. battle flag up there with the gold fringe. I don't care about that. <laughs> and now, here's I, the kicker. Let me ask you this real quick so that the, the people understand this. What did you find, because it goes right here, right where you're at, something Nevada has that most of the states don't have, and this is priceless, so everybody pay attention and let your ears perk up, especially if you live in the state of Nevada, because these judges are claiming that they follow statutory code. Can you tell them what yeah, code you um, found, Rebecca? There's this little thing in the NRS, Nevada Revised Statutes, with the number 1.030 that defines uh, the law that will be applied in the courts. It mandates common law to be applied in the courts. It will be, it shall be, the rule of decision in all courts in Nevada. How inconvenient. I know. Wasn't that inconvenient? Because she could use the statutes to pull in the Constitution. Wasn't that great? I love this, guys. Awesome. Okay, awesome. go ahead awesome. with your story, Rebecca. Yeah, go ahead. And I, I, I really thought that was, you know, my trump card, and I was so eager to play it. But, you know, I was sticking to my little script so I wouldn't get rattled and, and pulled off track because you know how quick, how clever they are in entrapping you in their little mm-hmm. devious ways. So, um, so, so at this point, um, when I mentioned the bat, you know, the battle flag with the gold fringe and how it's uh, indicative of an admiralty court, bailiff, bailiff, he's calling to the bailiff, <laughs> and then he says to me, "Your choice." He says, uh, "He says you have a choice," and then I, you know, I pipe up. It's not a choice. Your choice is you can walk out of here and come back when you're ready to deal with your citation, and then he condescends to me. It's called a traffic citation. It's given to you for violating a traffic law. And I said, it was an unlawful stop. And so now he's really annoyed with me. And then I just, yeah. you know, because... <laughs> and, so, and then, you know, once he goes off again, I just said, Judge, are you trying to deny my right to due process? And I have to say, I just I really kept my... 
I just kept my weight cool. I kept my an even uh, temper throughout the whole thing. Um, and he's losing it. And then he says, you know what? You can leave now, and I'll send a warrant out for you. Or I'll just put you in jail until you can cooperate. Do you understand? Do you understand that? <laughs> he says, I've already told you. The Supreme Court of the State of Nevada has denied any of this. Okay, well, l- <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me trump the Supreme Court of Nevada. He <laughs> did say, he, do you understand your rights? So he was, obviously, he, he, he gave enough to, uh, to, to make you understand that rights were involved. Well, Miranda v. Arizona says where rights secured by the Constitution are involved, there can be no rulemaking or legislation which would abrogate them. That's mm-hmm. game check point there. Well, and and I've got one for for I'm going to let Rebecca finish, and then I'm going to read y'all something. So you're going to love this. But anyway, go ahead, Rebecca. Okay, so so now he's he's getting really impatient, and he almost has this whiny tone to his voice because he sees that. He's not. He he can't. He can't control me and lead me to the guillotine as he does every other ignorant person that walks through the courtroom. And he mm-hmm. says, "I'm not going to go with you anymore. I'm tired of this." And he's whining. I'm not going to do it anymore. You understand? You're going to just be like any other citizen that comes into this court. You're gonna you're gonna tell me whether you understand your rights. And I said, "Not as you presented them." <laughs> and I said, "I have the right to know." what the jurisdiction of this court is, whether it's common law, and then he interrupts again, and then, of course, he makes up his own jurisdiction. And get this, so his, in his little snarky tone, he tells me that the jurisdiction is the Walker River Justice Court. It's set up by the state of the county of Lyon, and then it goes to the state of Nevada, and guess what? What's the top court of the land? Can you show... Oh, no, what's the top court of the land? Top court of the land? Oh, please don't tell me. Can, uh, shoot. I, and then I, I start to ask him, I try to ask him if he can show me the rules, but he interrupts me again. In the state of Nevada, that's the Supreme Court. <laughs> so the Supreme Court is the, is the, uh, the Supreme Court of Nevada is the highest court in our land, according to him. And they've mm-hmm. already said that the validity of what I'm saying which I never got a chance to truly say. He never let me get it out. And then I asked him, you know, I waited for him to to finish his verbal diarrhea, and I said, can you please tell me where I can find the published rules of criminal procedure under that jurisdiction? And and then he says, I can say this. If you don't get up and leave, you're going to go to jail. I can tell you that because now you're disrupting. As a matter of fact, (laughs) no, sir, I'm asserting my rights. I beg to differ with you, sir. I'm asserting my right. And uh, you don't have I do have those rights, sir. And then he mocks me and says, the Supreme Court of the State of Nevada said you do not. So you do not. Just because you say you do doesn't mean you do. (laughs) So here's a question. (laughs) Now, now, didn't he try to plead for you? That's coming. Okay. (laughs) Hold on a second. Before you get there, before you get there, let me refute his argument one more time. The claim and exercise of a constitutional right cannot be converted into a crime. Therefore, if you're standing there claiming, it doesn't say that you have to be correct. The claim and exercise of a constitutional right cannot be converted into a crime. Therefore, he was threatening you with kidnapping. Mm-hmm. For doing the very same thing that Miller v. U.S., that is the U.S. Supreme Court, Mm -hmm. declared you had every right in the world to do. Just saying. Absolutely. Okay, go ahead. Miller v. U.S., folks. Miller v. U.S. So after he uh, insults me further, saying that just because I say I do doesn't mean I do, um, I said, sir, I'm not an ignorant person. I have researched my rights. And then he, in a disrespectful, defamatory, condescending tone, says to me, you read what some other idiot published and all this other stuff. And I said, other idiot? Are you in furry? And, that, of course, he interrupts me again with more sarc- sarcasm. And Why didn't I read the Supreme Court what they have to say? I said, I've read many cases, sir. You need to leave. We're going to jail. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll take 
window um, number two. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes on how he's been through this multiple times. Well, I certainly haven't. And he said, mm-hmm. and then I said, are you enforcing statutes in this court, sir? I'm going to send you to jail. That's what I'm going to do. If you get up here, if, yeah, if you get up and leave, <laughs> I'm trying to read part of this from the script. Uh, if you get up and leave, and I'll send I'll send out a warrant for you, or I'll put you in jail now, or you'll answer my questions. We'll get through this. We'll. <laughs> just, I'm not going to let you waste the court's time. And I'm even paraphrasing a lot. Can, of hold on. Can I can I interrupt okay. you one more time? Can I, can of I quote another one of those one of those idiots? Allow me allow me to quote another one of those idiots for this judge. Yeah. The right of the citizen to travel upon the public highways and to transport his or her property thereon, either by horse-drawn carriage or by automobile, mm-hmm. is not a mere privilege for which a city or any jurisdiction can prohibit or permit at will, but a common right which he has under the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And then I fall back to the same one that I stood on before. The claim of an exercise of a constitutional right cannot be converted into a crime. Game checkpoint. Go ahead. Oh, wait, wait. No, i got to add one. There can be no sanction or penalty imposed upon one because the exercise of constitutional right either. Share v. Cullen. I'm sorry. Thompson v. So Smith. I, hope I, uh, I forgot to point that. I hope I, <laughs> but I these hope are just idiots. These are not people that know what they're talking about. This is the U.S. Supreme Court. But according to this judge in Nevada, the United States Supreme Court are a bunch of idiots. I wonder how they would <laughs> like that. There's a new Supreme Court coming, people. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited about that, Tom. You know that. Uh, go ahead, Rebecca. I'm sorry. Well, before I go too far, I want to make sure I get a recording of this. You guys have given me some good ideas for the, the court appearance I have to return to on the it's first. It's always anyway, recorded and live you, on YouTube. Don't you even plenty. worry about it. I will send you Excellent. plenty of information. <laughs> All righty. So um, after he informs me I'm wasting the court's time, um, I said, with all due respect, I'm not trying. And, of course, he interrupts again. Yes, you are wasting time. Sir, I'm not They're the ones who waste- brought you in there. That's right. You didn't ask I'm to be brought to in there. Be- They're wasting I your time. In there by I came in there by special appearance. He was That's honored right. to have me in his book. <laughs> <And so, laughs> I, I love you. I'm not trying. Uh, I'm not trying to waste the court's time. I'm merely asserting my right. And mm-hmm. finally, you are wasting the court's time. You are not entitled to those rights because you don't have them. Mm-hmm. Right like that. And then I ask, well, then, then who does, Judge? Only you? <laughs> <laughs> so I, call, I calmly reply, are my rights a waste of the court's time? You don't have them. Do you understand? You just, and I said, you just wiped out the Constitution? <laughs> I didn't wipe out the Constitution. I'm just following the Supreme Court rules. Boom. Done deal. He said that. And then I said, you're not well. following all of them. And then he mocks and says, you do understand your rights. I said, I understand my constitutional rights, sir. So uh, he went on and he tried a different approach. He started reading the actual statutes and charges, and um, then asked me, how do you play? <laughs> and, of course, I had to say, in order to defend myself intelligently, I need to know, and I was going to ask for the jurisdiction again, um, which he never properly identified. So then he said, how do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? The court is entering a not guilty plea. I mean, he didn't even really give me time to respond to Practicing that Practicing law so, from the bench. That's exactly, exactly right, Tom. So I said, I object, I object, I said it very strongly and forcefully, I said, for you to enter a plea on my behalf constitutes an act of practicing law from the bench. Entering my plea is my job or that of my attorney. Have you made a judicial determination that I'm not guilty, Judge? And he didn't answer. Have you made a judicial determination that I'm not guilty? You know, and basically at this point he's conferring with his clerk and they're setting my next court date. (laughs) So there you have it. And then, oh, then, and then, uh, okay, have your court date, um, I'll see you on that date, and then, um, what was it, and I just basically said, under my objection, meaning I was still referencing that uh, I wasn't letting that uh, 
not guilty plea fit that he entered for me. Right. So, so, and that just so the, the, the great thing about this, Tom, is there is evidence to back up everything she's saying. Of course there is. Okay. The problem is, the problem is, and this I have to explain this to people. The public has been so propagandized, they're going to call you a couple names. One, they're going to call you a sovereign citizen, which is an oxymoron. doesn't exist. It's, 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 a, it's a misnomer. It's one of those uh, government-created terms to silence people that actually know what the hell they're talking about. Uh, it, 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 they basically have, since 1868, installed a communistic government, and, and they have been unrolling it and unfolding it before our eyes, little by little by little by little. Now, I have to explain this to people because, you know, I see these videos on YouTube all the time, you know, it's sovereign citizen owned. No, they're not. Oh, yeah, well, guess, I guess you could say that they are owned. A lot of these people you see in the videos don't know what they're doing. They don't know the law. They haven't done the research. They read a couple lines or a website or something, and then they take it to the umpteenth degree, and they don't know what they're doing, and they make a bad name for everyone. But that is exactly what the government wants them to do. And I, in my opinion, the government puts out a lot of this propaganda in order to trap these people into doing just that. But if we read back and we read very carefully the Supreme Court as well as state Supreme Court rulings, Mm -hmm. Traveling upon and transporting one's property upon the public roads is a right, and a right where, right where where rights are involved, no rulemaking can be allowed. We forget back to days where, where they used to set up un unlawful and illegal toll roads, and governments used to, to essentially rip people off by using the, the color of law, their authority, the, the, the seeming authority that they had to extort money from the people. That is exactly what is going on. Because they have every single person, person, mind you, a corporation, huh? they have them in, in a diminished capacity operating on the road in a presumed commercial capacity that they're not operating in. If you're not, if you're not operating a business, um, using the, the roads as a place of business or, 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 or some such, it, it's, that it, it's a little bit different than operating upon the road for just traveling from point A to point B, conducting your your personal business. They're, the roads are constructed and maintained at the public's expense. And no person, no person can insist that he has or may acquire a vested right to the use of in carrying on a commercial business by using the roads that we've paid for for travel in that capacity without, without going a little extra step. So in other words, you have a corporation. This is the reason this was set up and they took this and they ran with it, uh, a business that says has 20 trucks and they're making a great deal of money, but they're using the roads that the public have paid for and they, they wear upon those roads and they create wear and tear upon those roads that people have paid for for their own personal right to be able to, 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 to travel. Those people are charged an additional sum in order to cover the cost of the wear and tear of the road. That was it. That was the only authority that you gave them a little tiny incremental of an inch to be able to do something that seemed like it was sensible. And then they converted everyone into operating in a commercial capacity through FDR, the, the, the uh, uh, Colonel Mandel House, the, the registration of her biological properties, the corporation through the birth certificate, all these things that they have used, these bar association lawyers have used to, to basically establish a monopoly, a, a, a fiefdom upon the roads. Uh, piracy. Really, but definitely, they have become pirates. Definitely. Pirates. And, you know, her, she got threatened Arr, for her God. vehicle to get towed if she didn't sign that citation. Did you know that? Yeah, so you're threatened right. to have your, 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 well, see, again, here's part of the problem is that, um, uh, your your property is not your property anymore, it, 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 and it's all by fraud, so it technically is, but really, when you're paying, like those of you that are paying property taxes, you don't pay your property taxes, your, your private property gets stolen from you, taken from you, you're a tenant, you don't own it. If you don't have the alloidal title, you don't own it. If you don't have the certificate of origin, you don't have that pink slip to your, your car, you don't own it. The state owns it, and, and you are basically, uh, you're allowed to rent the usage of that 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 conveyance uh, at the state's permission because we live 
and we have been living in a commune fascistic or communitarian state since 1868. And, and there are ways out of it. There is remedy out of it. Uh, it is all done by fraud. But the same thing that I tell you is now that they have a mechanized, militarized force, I hate to say this, folks, but you could, in, back in Bolshevik Russia, you could sit there and you could look at Stalin and say, I have constitutional boom. And you get a bullet through your head. Folks, we have to take this back through knowledge. The only problem is, is that there's only one or two of you going through that court where 20, 30, 40, 50 need to be going through that court using the same defense, using the same truth. And the problem is, is that they, through mass propaganda, they have dumbed down the entire American public. Uh, we have somebody who's a, 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 a former law enforcement officer, both in the military and in the public duty on the line right now to join in this conversation but Wonderful. i want you to continue on chris in las vegas is with us chris i want you i want you a part of this uh but i want our guest to, to finish with uh uh what she was saying go ahead and, and and finish your story and then i want chris to weigh in on this that was pretty much um the the portion of court today but after that i marched over to the sheriff's office and fortunately he was in and I had a little conversation with him um, explaining what had just happened and how that <laughs> I told him that um, now that I, I just didn't want any trouble with his officers. I know that they've had a lot of corruption, a corrupt deputies in his department that I knew he was working to clean up, and I wanted to see him continue that work. <laughs> and, um, and then he informed me once I said my piece Essentially, that he had uh, no intention of obeying the U.S. Constitution. He was going to enforce Nevada law, he said. Well, he's a communist. That's 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 the sad yeah. fact. That is the so sad I, fact. And I, I'm going to end up giving him, um, issuing a demand letter to him that he's to leave me alone. And you know, I, I'm going to send him a notice, basically, that he's going to be in violation of my constitutional rights if he... If any of his officers, I was trying to, you know, trying to create a, a bridge there. But if if he's not on, if he's not, he started. He ran as a constitutional sheriff. This is the real betrayal there. But if he's if he's going to um, sign up on the other side, then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to file federal com uh, criminal complaints against them the next time I'm stopped, which I'm sure I will be. Yeah, you will be. But see, here's the right. thing, you know, our, thing. Our, our framer said that liberty isn't free. And this is exactly right. what they well, meant. You know, we let when, this go far too long, and now we have to fight ten times harder. So what, what I did, I want to tell people, too, that what I have on my vehicle um, is a, I call it a sign, it, and it is. It's okay, a stop, warning stop. Call. I need to start changing your language. You Automobile. Do a, you do not have a motor vehicle. You have an automobile that can be de de right. debated or refuted by the state based upon uh, a couple different things that I'll talk to you about off air. But you were under the impression that when you purchased your automobile, that it was your property, your private property, your personal property, right. and you were defrauded into any other such arrangements. So you have to start using the definitions of law properly. A motor vehicle is, is uh, an automobile for hire. Uh, it's it's other than right. uh, an automobile. It's used for transportation of persons, which is uh, uh, for commercial profit. Whereas the term automobile, uh, it, it annotates a pleasure vehicle designed for the transportation transportation of of persons on the highways for their own personal use. Very important. Go ahead. You're absolutely right, and I am aware of that. But old habits die hard, and I am you know. You know, re reprogramming myself here gradually. <laughs> yes, it's mind but, control. You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. We've so all, I, I've made, all do it. We got a good break, folks. We'll be we'll be right back after a few words from our sponsors, Resurrect the Republic Truth Radio Broadcast from RBN. Let me tell you how it's gonna work, kids. You work hard like your parents both did. Everything you earn by breaking your backs. We're gonna distribute when we make our pay tax. Hey, sit back down, don't be a jerk. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website 
by going to republicbroadcasting.org. You, your husband, your wife, your children, we all need food. And with dozens of food storage companies buying up airtime all over radio, it's hard for you to know which company you can actually trust. Hey folks, John Statmiller here. We at RBN understand, which is why I personally searched out a storable food company and one with similar core values to us here at RBN and of course you, the listener. Well, I found such a company. I'd like to introduce you to Numana Food Storage. Numana Food Storage, highly nutritious, GMO-free, contains no aspartame, no high fructose corn syrup, has no chemical preservatives or soy, and Numana Food Storage has a 25-year shelf life. To back up my claims, we've made Numana Food Storage the exclusive food sponsor of RBN. Call 888-597-0775, 888-597-0775. Order online at numanarepublic.com. That's N-U-M-A-N-N-A, republic.com. Food storage you'll love to eat. How you doing? This is Jimmy from Zipa. And I want to talk to you a little bit about Black Friday and Cyber Monday. All you people that like to procrastinate, the people that like to go ahead on Black Friday the night before and they camp out waiting for that great deal. Well, hello, newsflash. The deal for Zipa is now. The deal for Zipa is today. We do not reward procrastination. If you want a great price on a Zipa, go to Zipa.com and buy now. If you're going to go ahead and procrastinate, we're going to penalize you for it. What does that mean? That means the price of all the Zipas go up on Black Friday. And you know what happens on Cyber Monday? It goes up again. This is the last opportunity that you will have to get this great price for the Zipa. This is the time now. You wait to Black Friday, the price is going up. Because remember, sleep is priceless. Go to zipa.com, that's Z Y P P A H.com, and get the deal now. Hi, my name is Chris. Since the 1970s, I have been actively making products available that support good health. What makes my juices flow is helping mankind get healthy. Today, I'm going to tell you about a product that will help your juices to flow. I am excited to recommend Dr. Miller's Holy Tea to you. Even if we are eating a clean diet, These impurities are entering our bodies. Holy tea moves these poisons that are creating havoc with our health out of our bowels. It works on the whole digestive system. The five tasty herbs are combined to provide an amazing detoxifying and healing tea that will rid your body of the pollutants and soothe your digestive tract, and in some cases, help you lose weight. It is critical for our health to move all of the environmental toxins from our bodies. The holy tea can do that. As a hydrocholine therapist, remember, with every BM, you're supporting RBN. www.holytea.org. 800-326-2001. Homeowners, are you in foreclosure, expecting to be served with a foreclosure lawsuit, or suspect your lender has coerced you into an illegal mortgage transaction? A huge number of mortgages made in the last 10 years have legal issues and are possibly defective. State laws and the U.S. Supreme Court have upheld that defective mortgage documents are grounds for foreclosure defense and for counterclaims in favor of the homeowner. If your mortgage has been sold or assigned since closing the loan, it may be defective and you may be paying the wrong party and the lender may not have standing or the right to foreclose or collect payments under the law. If you would like to know if your mortgage is legal or not or know if you are paying the right party, we can help. Our initial consultations are free of charge. We are not attorneys. We are legal researchers and work closely with experienced lawyers who know how to help you find the evidence to help you keep your home. Call toll free 1-855-2-KEEP-IT. That's 1-855- the number 2, keep it today. Welcome back, Resurrect Republic Truth Radio Broadcast on the Republic Broadcasting Network. You know, folks, I was scanning through some things uh, on the break, and, and I just couldn't help but come across this cartoon. You know these political cartoons? Well, there's there's one of, of Donald Trump kind of uh, giving a goose, a uh, little goose grab to the Statue of Liberty. Well, and, and, and there was, there was yeah, there was a couple of people who were commenting on this saying, this is our president, this is our president. And I said, okay, I, I had to respond. And this is, how I, this is how I responded. I know maybe it was in poor taste. I said, would you rather have this as your meme or one of Obama in a limousine? And I, didn't, I just stopped there. 
Mm-hmm. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yep. Okay. Let me tell you something, folks. We're being so propagandized by uh, a guy. Look, I know Donald Trump, uh, he may not be the, 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 uh, the biggest guy on couth, okay, mm-hmm. when it comes to things. But you know what? When I heard the Russian president say, you know what, we can, we can, uh, they're, they're taking a step back, uh, and, and we went from DEFCON 3 back to a normal uh, military uh, positioning, and, mm-hmm. and, you know, that, that, that Putin is, is actually somewhat glad, uh, and that, you know, some sort of talks can be reestablished, and we can bring some kind of sanity back into the world. When people, you know, they, they say that, that Donald Trump, oh, I don't want his hands near the nuclear button. And they have no idea how close we were right. to war, or are, really, because Obama's mm-hmm. still in there, are right. to war with Russia. That or, that, or that Obama has already bombed in Yemen. Let's not forget yes. that. Yes, He's yes, already yes. So anyway, I'm getting, off, I'm getting off topic, but I'm sorry about that. But that, that, that imagery just hit me, and I had to respond. I had to share that with you. Anyway. Uh, our guest I wanna, is still I wanna, describing what was going on. I'll, Lori, I'm going to give you the floor. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Okay, and I just wanted to say this real quick off of what you just said, Tom, and then we'll get right back to you, Rebecca, um, about that. That wasn't because of Trump, per se, Tom, and see if you agree with me on this. This is because the American people sent a message to Russia. We have never supported this. That is I agree. What, I agree. It's because I, we, I the people... All across this union sent a message to Russia so strong that they realized the American people are not with these illegal wars. They knew that, but that was such a solid confirmation that it moved the situation from, like you said, from very close possibility of nuclear war right there. I mean, it was right there. Even yep. Obama instigating by bombing in Yemen to help Saudi Arabia. But I look at how badly look at how badly the American public can be propagandized. What we're talking about right now tonight with the right to travel with this case. OK, we have case law going back, not just not just, uh, you know, back to the 1800s. I'm talking about when automobiles were driving upon the roads. We have Supreme Court decisions that time after time after time after time said the same things over and over again about these things. And only in the past several decades has all of this been completely thrown out and replaced. They don't have the right to replace constitutional rights. They do not. Absolutely, constitutional restrictions upon government is actually more accurate. They don't have the right. So I'm going to give you the floor back and let's get back to top. Okay, go ahead, Rebecca. Well, I just um, wanted to mention that the sign that I have uh, where my life, where a license plate would be on other vehicles, is traveler, non-commercial, not mm-hmm. for hire. Underneath that, I have not subject to USC Title 49, Section 31301. So I'm putting them on notice right there. I am not subject. I opted out of that code. And that's mm-hmm. beneath that I have U.S. Title 18, Section 241, 242, and now I'm going to add 245 because that is um, specific to, to travel. But that basically puts them on notice that if they violate my rights, they are committing a federal felony. Mm-hmm. Yep, and it's true. It's, it's true. The problem is, and, and I'm going to tell everybody out there, I, I haven't had a license in many years, and I've won four cases in court because I have I managed to have judges who were, they were not antagonistic, and, and I spoke to them very uh, respectfully, and they spoke to me very respectfully, and they were, uh, they really were pleased with my knowledge uh, of, of the Supreme Court rules that I brought forward to them. They said I could intelligently articulate and pull myself out of commercial capacity. These people knew what I was talking about, and I was I was sent on my way. So I know that this that, that, that the reality of this, the problem is, is that most of these communistic, fascistic, communitarian judges that have been so 
they have had one idiot after i hate to say I, I'm, I'm sorry american public for calling you idiots it's not your fault you've been dumbed down intentionally it's a crime really these are victims one victim after another after another after another that have come up in these courts have given these judges this sense of security that we've won that's it it's over we're communists we're here and tough whether you like it or not and we have guys with guns to enforce it right right it's it's insane um i wanted to say this in standard lumber company versus pierce um and and this is under the reed v fisher if you want to look that up it and um it says this court declared that classification must quote rest upon some ground of difference having a fair and substantial relation to the object of the legislation so that all persons similarly circumst circumstance shall be treated alike unquote in quaker city cab company v pennsylvania the federal Supreme Court held invalid a statute which imposed a tax of eight mils per dollar upon the gross receipts of corporations engaged in the transportation of persons and freight, but made no mention of individuals engaged in the same pursuit. The court declared, quote, the charter of the owner is the sole fact on which the distinction and the discrimination are made to depend. The tax is imposed merely because the owner is a corporation. The discrimination is not justified by any difference in the source of the receipts or in the situation or character of the property employed. And then, to, so to understand that, uh, for y'all that didn't quite grasp it, I know most of y'all did, it is showing that there's a huge difference between individual and the corporation. So also in Reed, Reed Field v. Fisher, it says... The individual, unlike the corporation, cannot be taxed for the mere privilege of existing. The corporation is an artificial entity which owes its existence and charter powers to the state. But the individual's rights to live and own property are natural rights for the enjoyment of which an excise cannot be imposed. Now what, is right what are driver's licenses fees? What are they? What are those fees? Right. They're, that's a tax. It's tax. They just don't call it a tax, but it's a tax. Right. So you can you can put lipstick on a pig too. It still don't change the fact that it's a pig. <laughs> oh, I've got one for you about that comment. You had to go there, didn't you, Tom? I did. Okay. Okay. So so. Um, I'm just going to say this before we pull Chris on because I'm sure Chris has a lot of great things to say as well. And he's always so wonderful to have on the show. Um, so what I want to say is this, guys. You know how all the leftists that are being paid by Soros are screaming that Donald Trump hates immigrants? Um, yeah, yeah, his wife is an immigrant. <laughs> okay, I, have, I really have to go there because somebody was smart. Remember when Michelle Obama had had held the sign up for the girls that were kidnapped by Boko Harim um, and bring our girls home. You know, that's like the only thing yep, that they yep. could do. So they rewrote that. And it was the same picture, but of course they put a different message in it. And it says, I just got replaced. My, I lost my job to an immigrant. And it was oh! funny because we have these people claiming that he hates immigrants while he, the first Lady is a legal immigrant turned American citizen. Now, how poetic is that? Oh, very. But you know that that was that was one of the things that he had made mention of a couple times during the campaign. But uh, but he didn't he didn't stand too heavily on it. <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think people got it. I don't think it clicked to them. Uh, hello, people. Yep. How are you yep. saying he's anti-immigrant? His wife's an immigrant. So, okay. That's right. um, That's right. Anyway, back Chris to topic. Here. Yeah, let's pull Chris on here and, and see what he has to interject in this. Well, good evening, Chris, with us. There he is. I think so. Just walking through the door here. You know, I'm going to invoke the spirit of Samuel Clemens, a.k.a. Mark Twain, who said, in particular, let me shut the door, he said the difference between the right word 
and the almost right word is like the difference between lightning and a lightning bug. Right. <laughs> and so this word art stuff that we have to play these word tricks with because of these demons that want to twist the word, that's where the word attorney comes from. Mm -hmm. It's very hyper necessity that we are careful with the words we choose. Mm -hmm. And that traveling concept, this one you'll want to take a note of, Miss Barrington. And go in. Good evening, Miss Lori and Tom and all the good listeners. Good evening. And I've missed you. Hey, hey, hey. My apologies. I was a little off my thing coming in here. Uh, oh, no. I was saying I missed you because I haven't been here. Ah. <laughs> uh, UCC 9-109, you'll find that specifies that uh, private home conveyances or automobiles not used for hauling passengers of freight for hire are not to be licensed, taxed, or insured. <laughs> for a little explanation, I think I heard you mention Title 18-245, Part 2, Parenthetical E, which assures the right to travel. And yep. let's see here, there was something else I was going to tell you about that. Oh, right. Use designates the nature of the device and what it's uh, being utilized for, of course. And so whenever they try to pervert it into the fact that you're not hauling, that you're a commercial operator. In fact, I don't know if I've shared with you, Tom, I think I did about my recent robbery um, oh, yeah, you've been, on, you, 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 you've been on, we've been talking about it, yep. Yeah, 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 I mean, that was like a, a terrorist act, it really traumatized me. Uh, I told you I thought I was a targeted individual, and I got confirmation when I was over yesterday to get the uh, records and the event for that particular deal, and the little girl that was a new trainee that had a watcher behind her the whole time, she was so surprised at what she saw at the screen, she pulled her right hand out, pointed her finger, and showed her supervisor and drew her hand across the bottom of the screen to some sort of text or alert warning or something that came up, although my record came back with zero felonies, misdemeanors, or warrants, of course. Mm -hmm. Not surprising to me on that. Right. And something I think everyone will be quite interested in, we've had some really very intriguing successes recently with some mortgage fraud closure cases where suddenly the banks are now sending back the actual wet ink on white paper note with the double holes at the top and the mortgage deed of trust marking paid in full. Oh, and that's these are, wonderful. These are going back a couple of years to some things that they were doing with uh, electronic one-way wire transfers and A for Bs and stuff of that nature. But it appears, I think, through the Wells Fargo and John G. Stumps being determined to be such a predatory, rapacious criminal and mm -hmm. uh, stealing people's IDs, making up their own versions of accounts for them and uh, getting rich off of it and then charging them with the uh, damaged credit forever and their loans mm -hmm. they got and were preyed upon because of the bad faith practices of Wells Fargo Bank and uh, all their criminals that were being motivated by the policies that provided unjust enrichment or punishment, the cloud and pivot mm -hmm. method. Pressure yeah. from above, pressure from above, below. Mm -hmm. But I'm really glad to hear that others out there, like Miss Barrington, are fighting against the beast system, this whore of Babylon that we're all battling. And I certainly right. applaud her. I don't know what part of Nevada she's in, but if she's in southern Nevada, well, I'd buy her a drink or um, a, a soft drink, beverage, or a latte sometime. And everything is we'll uh, have pretty to good get on you that. Two connected. Oh, uh, we'll get you two connected for we'll sure. Get you connected. Well, I have volumes and volumes of right to travel law, and not just the ones we talk about on this, as you mentioned, and Cooper versus Aaron. And I mean, as this goes on and on and on, the Hale versus Hinkle has been cited hundreds of times and never overturned. So it's about as solid a law as there is. Right. And what gets me is, you know, we only have the two hour show. So we can't, if we were to go over all of the cases, we would be here, what? days uh, a couple weeks <laughs> you know and um, people don't realize that we we quote the most popular ones but sometimes we pull out ones that are not popular so that you can look these up yourselves we don't ask you to take our word for anything look them up yourselves please verify everything 
And that is so important. I call Rebecca the accidental patriot, and that's a story for another night. But um, <laughs> she she is a wonderful, wonderful individual. She is, uh, and she knows, she can laugh about it because she knows it's true. That is my nickname for her, the accidental patriot. Well, as long as she's on our side, I'm happy to have her, even if she oh, might she be is. <laughs> horrible by Hillary Clinton and her plan. Oh, no, she's definitely on our side. Definitely on, I will vouch for her. <laughs> well, let me turn the uh, microphone and the show back over to you, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll bow out, but thanks for letting me chime in, and I hope that was a little bit helpful for you, and it seemed like there was another one I was going to think of, but I just can't recall at this minute, and I apologize. Oh, that's okay. I'm sure you'll have it. I'm sure it's you'll have it. It's fine. In the it's fine. Thank you for thank you for coming back in and talking with us. And I really have missed you. I've missed everybody. Um, I had a situation cool. where my internet went down, and um, you know, uh-huh. without that funding, you can't get it up. And God blessed me, and back I am again. So you know, those stumbling stones all be, always become stepping stones to me. So I just I'm blessed. And the individual that helped take care of that, I want to personally thank. I won't name them because they don't want me to, but uh, um, I just thank them, you know. And the whole reason that they took care of that Internet situation for me was because they said uh, my voice needed to be heard. I needed to get back on radio. and I needed to get back out to being able to do what I needed to do. So I want to thank them for that, too. Well, I'm um, glad they came to their senses and made a sound decision. Well, it was really, you know, and I didn't call out and ask for help because I just don't do that. So I know that it was God that sent it my way. Um, uh-huh. It was it was just a miraculous thing. God works that way. It's great. So, um, so anyway, hang on there because I want you to hear some really neat uh, stuff that we've got going on. Do you want to go ahead and go into the um, the Democrats are already panicking? Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> okay, so for the individuals who are unaware of HR 1669, this, like I said earlier in the show, and in case you weren't with us, it is a uh, the transparency of payments made from the Judgment Fund. And they are calling the short title of it the Judgment Fund Transparency Act of 2015. No, this didn't just get put in. This was put in March of 2015, so this didn't just get put in because Donald Trump went into office. However, as you well know, this administration has been so happy to be completely lawless, to not give a rip about. They loved Obama's executive orders. They loved the illegal actions um, and amnesty, and now they're starting to panic because they seem to think that this is going to be about the ransom that President Obama paid because it came out of this fund. And so they're wanting accountability to the people to be able to um, find out where funds are going, who they're going to, and where they're coming from, and um, the different aspects that the American people need to know. So if you could, um, can you please play LV1? I would offer an amendment in the nature of a substitute that will require additional information be made publicly available for payments to foreign states. And I plan to have a more detailed description of this amendment once it's offered. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. What puts the gentleman from Tennessee seek recognition? Uh, to, to make an opening statement. The gentleman's recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. When this bill came before us, uh, there was concern on my part and others that this was a failed attempt to question the Iran agreement and the administration. And while I'm in favor of transparency and continue to be and will always be, I had some problems with it at the time for that reason. Of course, a lot of things have changed. And I hope that as things have changed, that those who were prominent in talking about and having a special subcommittee on oversight of excessive government regulations and oversight of the executive will still have that concern about legislative prerogatives and about Article I. I think this committee has the potential to be very bipartisan in standing up for Article I, which is an article that I'm not sure is known on Fifth Avenue and 56th Street. 
I don't think they know what Article One is. Uh, and Article <laughs> One is us. And we're going to have, as a Judiciary Committee, an important role in making sure that the executive doesn't roll, run over the legislative branch, the judicial branch, and every other branch. Like so it will be interesting oh, to, hear. Hear. to see how much we do that. I hope my colleagues will join me in having great oversight over that. the executive. You can, you can pause that right uh, there. We're, we're going to be getting we're going to be getting back into that again tomorrow. But uh, how ironic it is that all of a sudden that with his phone and his pen that the Democrats never had a problem with, never had a problem with him exercising. Now all of a sudden they're 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 concerned with. Oh, the, just wait. He quotes um, about Trump. No, I, I will. We're going to we're going to we're, we're, we're going to. All right. Well, well, let let us try and get back to that. But I, I want to delve deeper into that tomorrow. Yeah. It's great. Uh, so if we have a chance to do that, we have a couple callers on the line. I want to give them their chance, too, because they've been waiting patiently. Okay, well, uh, let's do that, and then everybody be prepared for tomorrow, because yeah. we're going to cover that bill, and we're going to cover a lot more clips, and you're not going to want to miss them. Go ahead and go to yes, the callers. Yes, that's a fact. Yeah, Jim in Missouri. Jim, you're on. Hey, can you hear me okay? Yes. Sir. can. Welcome. Oh, okay. Uh uh, is Rebecca the gal that's been having all the troubles? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I need to ask a, a question. Does she work uh, for the government? No. No. Okay. If she doesn't work for the government, then she has no constitutional right. And I'm um, surprised that this was not actually, brought up. Actually, yes, she does we because have, even... Hold no, on. There, I understand there what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. But just because they say that just because you don't work for the government doesn't mean you have a constitutional right. Even their statutes in Nevada cover that, dear. Okay. So you're their telling statutes me in Nevada that right covers that it has to be under const it has to be under common law. Okay, but but what you're saying is is that our rights came from the government because they're going to put it in statute. No, I've correct. never said that. Our rights okay, are well, unalienable and were never given to us by any constitution. They were confirmed in the constitution. Okay, and so that's what I'm trying to clarify. But they yes. are the ones who took the oath, thus they are the ones who are limited to those constitutions, not the yes. people. No, I, and, and I agree. But, but she knows that, to, yes. To declare... But for her to declare that she has constitutional rights and the judge says, no, you don't, he's correct. She doesn't. She well, has rights granted by her he creator. If he asks her, do you, right, but he and in the de facto, they use the quote-unquote constitutional rights even under the de facto 14th Amendment. They also use the quote-unquote constitutional right that if your constitutional rights are quote-unquote violated under 18 U.S. Code 241 and 242 under color of law, then thus they can be charged for that because they have the unalienable right, but it's confirmed in the Constitution, and the ones who take the oath to those constitutions are not allowed to violate them. Right. Well, so, so my question, I guess, would be... Um, would you go into to court and declaring a constitutional right? Because I personally wouldn't. I would say, no, I don't have a co constitutional right. I have the right. Natural right. That natural is a natural right. right. They, they are natural, natural right. rights. It is a natural system. right. No. It's just written on paper. Right. They, are, they are natural right. rights and, and, that pre-existed. So Excuse my, me. My, my total... Cut it. Cut, 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 cut. Hold on. Now I'm talking now. My show. They have, there's really the Bill of Rights is more appropriately called the Bill of Restrictions. Mm -hmm. Now, we're, we're doing tomato, tomato here. I understand what you're saying. I don't disagree with you. Uh, but at the same time, th this is how it's worded in their statute. So they put the nails on their own coffin in Nevada, is what Lori is saying. And she's right. These rights existed, many of them long before the Constitution has ever a thought in anybody's mind mm -hmm. but then again so were commercial capacity and corporations were all construction of government they're restricted by the chains of the constitution we understand that so does she 
Uh, folks, we've run out of time. I wanted to get to Russ in Alabama. Russ, call back tomorrow. We'll be uh, back tomorrow night talking about a lot of these things. Resurrect the Republic Truth Radio broadcast on RBN. And as always, everybody, watch your backs and check your facts. God bless you and good night.